A Love the Bird by Fernando Milsap. Samantha is a 32 year old gospel singer, songwriter with aspirations of being famous, and has just run away from her fiance um, and life to go on the road and record. And Gemma is a 36 year old pastor at a Better Way Baptist Church, divorced ex con. A small storefront Baptist church early on a Sunday morning, Samantha is on her knees praying at the pulpit, and Gemma enters. Oh Lord, please, please, tell me where to go from here. I feel so lost right now. Why don't things keep going so wrong when all I want to do is be happy? You've blessed me with this talent to sing gospel, but why are there so many obstacles, Lord? When Malcolm broke up with me, I, I took it as a sign that I should pursue my dreams, writing and singing, but now this? What am I supposed to do now? God, finding happiness is not supposed to be this hard. All I want to do is be happy. Excuse me, Miss. Are you okay? Couldn't help but overhear your prayer. I'm sure God heard it too, but could I be of any assistance to you? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to intrude, but the door was open. Oh, it's okay. Uh, the doors of a Better Way Baptist Church are always open to those in need. And sister, you seem to need the Lord right now. Yeah, well, I just needed a moment. I'm good. I I'll be going now. Thank you. Yes. If everything was good, I wouldn't have found you in such a contrite state. Give me a moment of your time. Even though God hears your prayers, he also <laughs> uses people like me to be present and listen and maybe respond if necessary. Now, my name is Pastor Jim. I'm Samantha. Nice to meet you, Pastor. In however you pronounce it. Uh, what kind of name is that anyway? It's pronounced in Jema. It means good in Swahili. Oh, so you mean like the good reverend in Jema. Got it. <laughs> yep. just like that. So, have you ever attended services here before? No, I'm not from around here. I was actually just passing through. I got off the bus to go use the restroom and smoke and bus left me. I left my phone, my bags, my ticket, and everything on there. It's crazy. I was so angry and frustrated that I just started walking. I was walking by when I saw your door open. And I was feeling so disconnected from God that I took it as a sign and came in. Maybe it was a sign. We don't get beautiful strangers on our doorstep all the time. <laughs> I can definitely, definitely relate to the feeling of being lost, disconnected. Even a man of faith can succumb to those feelings in today's world. So, where are you from, Samantha? I'm from everywhere and nowhere. <laughs> I feel like I'm always just passing through, but I've, I've been from lots of different places. They just were never my place. I don't seem to quite fit in anywhere. I was actually head, heading towards a gig in the next town with a friend of mine. He thinks he can help me make my dreams come true. <laughs> what are your dreams, pretty lady? Well, uh, I write and I sing gospel music. It's my passion. I just want to share my talent as a gift to the world. And maybe when people hear my music, they'll be able to see me for me. Maybe they could understand me and love me and I'll be famous and rich. <laughs> Happy, I think. It's great that you have dreams, and with faith, I'm sure you will accomplish them. But don't you want something a little more personal? A family who can meet those same needs? Yeah, maybe. I've thought about it, but I don't know if that's the life for me. I, I just was in a relationship that I thought was headed in that direction, but couldn't deal, so I broke Malcolm. I broke. Malcolm wanted the wife, the kids, that life, but I wasn't sure. Plus, I don't think he knew me or loved me. 
I think he was in love with the idea of me being his wife. God, why am I telling you my life story? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's part of my job. I feel like you're talking to God more than you're talking to me. I'm just a stand-in. Believe me, I understand how you feel. I was once trapped somewhere that wasn't my place either. I was miserable, miserable until I came to the realization that it's not the place which defines me. It's who brings meaning to the place. I had to find myself, not a particular place, to find comfort. Well, every place I tried to look for myself, I never felt quite comfortable with what I find there. But well, have you ever tried looking within yourself instead of some physical location? Uh, I should have known that the good reverend would give me that old, the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> it's within, right? Look, I've I just been through a whole lot. You don't know my struggle. My struggle is real. You probably never had a real struggle with ever finding a place in the world. I mean, <laughs> did you really ever look further than the church? Oh, I got to go slow you down 10 speed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wasn't always the good reverend. Before I came to the ministry, I was in that street life. So much that I wound up in prison serving a life sentence for murder. And by the grace of God, I was called to preach. You know, miraculously, things changed in the law and I was granted my freedom. But in that darkness is where I found the light within myself. My bad for assuming I know your story. <laughs> I just, just that I grew up in the church. My father is a preacher like his father before him, so I, I have this preconceived idea about who pastors are. That whole holier-than-thou crap and them all. It's all a part of what made me distance myself from the church in the first place. And Malcolm aspires to be a pastor. <laughs> that was going to make me a pastor's wife, like my mother. What's so wrong with that? Are you kidding me? I don't want to live like that. Mm, that mm -mm, I don't want that life. I have places to go, I things I want to do. I can't be tied down like that to some traditionally minded dinosaur. I can understand that you have places to go, but maybe whatever has brought you here today is God's way of showing you the way home. Home? Whatever. <laughs> the word is so foreign to me. For me, home is supposed to mean a place where People accept you for who you are and for who you want to become. It's like a place for family who has your back no matter what. I can't even imagine a place like that because people won't allow that to exist. So there's no one in your life who accepts you for who you are? Not? No. Not eternally for who I am. Well, a moment ago you admitted that you don't even know who you really are yourself. So how can you expect others to know and accept you? What I mean is that people can accept that I love to sing gospel, but I love to party as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too worldly for the church folk and too churchy for the world. I'm like... A juicy contradiction. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I get the contrast. My congregation is filled with ex-cons, dope fiends, and prostitutes, as, as well as good, hard-working, everyday, ordinary people. Uh, but they all want the same sense of peace and a place to fit in in this complex world. That's why the message I preach here at A Better Way is balance. A person needs to have equanimity in their life to have peace. You make it sound so simple. But for now, I need to figure out how I'm going to get to this gig. I have no money, no clothes, no phone, and I shut down all my social media accounts. So I have no way of getting in contact with anyone. It sucks. Well, I think I can help. Right now, all of our charitable fund is wrapped up in this fundraiser the church is conducting next week. After that, we can help you get a bus ticket and send you on your way. And while you're here, we'll give you room and board. 
but maybe you can help us too. How? What do you have in mind? We're giving a concert for our fundraising and our choir. And how can I say this nicely? They suck. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you can give them some pointers, and maybe who knows, you can even bless us with a verse. Oh, well, after you've already taken me in, how could I decline? <laughs> it's going to be great. It's not often we get blessed with a beautiful presence and a superstar gospel diva. <laughs> Not yet, but soon. Believe that. <laughs> End of scene one. Scene two. In Jema's office two weeks after their initial connection. Samantha <coughs> knocks on the door of Jema's office as he sits at his desk preparing for his next sermon. Come on in, Sam. Wow, you look beautiful. This dress isn't for from our Goodwill basket because if it is, you worked a miracle on <laughs> What's the occasion? Stop it, Pastor. <laughs> well, I have to look the part if I'm going to be a famous gospel singer, songwriter, but thank you for the compliment. <laughs> Actually, the police found my things. It's only been two weeks, but somebody grabbed the wrong bags and returned them the next day. When I turned on my phone, I had millions of missed calls from my friends who wants, who wants me to record. When I turned on my phone, I was like, oh, he sent me a ticket this morning, so I guess I'll be leaving tonight. What? But I thought after what happened a few nights ago, you would be hanging around. I mean, uh, what about the choir? What about me? What about us? <laughs> I'm so sorry. My experience here at A Better Way has been amazing, and spending time with you has been exactly what I needed, but I have to follow my dream. And you already knew this day will come. I told you that this life is not what I needed to get, what I needed to get away from. I thought it was getting away from what was expected of you that you needed to do. And being famous is very different from being loved and accepted for who you are. Now here, you, here, you are loved and accepted. I've only known you a short time, but it doesn't take a whole day to realize sunshine. And even with all that, I've been through with my ex -wife, with my ex-wife. I'm willing to give love a chance. So why can't you just negate what has happened to you in the past and accept happiness and having a place to belong when it's right in front of your eyes? So now you love me? <laughs> this is not fair. <laughs> I have feelings for you too, but I just don't think that the timing is right. I would love to have this life with you, but I want to see my dreams to fruition. Uh, listen, Sam, since you softened your exterior and allowed me to see within you, I know you need more than just to be a famous gospel star. You said that people needed to love you. You said that you needed people to love you. For who you are and not just for who they want you to be. You definitely have the talent to be famous, but your fans will never love you the way I do. But please, stay. I never expected to catch feelings for you, and I never expected for someone to understand me in such a profound way like you do, but I don't want to sacrifice my dreams to stay here and resent you. The day I met you, you were at your lowest. You told me you wanted to find a place to belong. Then you told me about Malcolm and how you were afraid of being his wife, and he, because he was a pastor and you didn't want to end up like your mother, but... But I haven't shown you in this small amount of time that I'm different. Haven't I shown you in this small amount of time that I'm different? I'm not the conventional pastor that I've taken a different route to get here. So I see the world differently. I can let your light shine however bright you want it to. And think. Think about it. That's worth more than fame. I told you all of that, and now you want to take advantage of my vulnerability? You are so man manipulative to use my most honest thoughts against me right now? 
You just want me to stay here and be your little preacher's wife and lead your little sucky choir and never, <laughs> never shine. <laughs> I was right. All pastors are just like you. Well, wait, wait. Now, now, how could you get all of that from what I've said? You're just recreating a situation so that you can run away again, just like you did to Mel. That is so uncool. You don't even know me like that, man. I ain't running away from nothing. I'm running toward my dreams. Don't get it twisted. You remember that line that you sang, sang for me in that song that you wrote the other night? After we kissed in the garden? You sang, he helps me face my feet so that they all just disappear. That was so beautiful. Now, I wished I believed in your own lyrics as much as I do, you are afraid of being loved. You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe I am afraid to be loved or having a place to call home or letting people in, but those are fears that I can't face until I have tried to live my whole dream, <coughs> even if only a small part of my dream. I'm sorry to say that you are like my father or Malcolm because you are truly unlike anyone I've ever met. It is so easy to let my guard down with you and, and let my heart speak. I've allowed you to see parts of me that no one else has ever seen. And I don't know why, but in showing you those parts of me, you have to see why it is important for you to go. I do. You'll be missed. Goodbye. Bye. End of scene two. Scene three. Small Front Baptist Church, early on a Sunday morning, five years after the last scene. And Jaina is on his knees praying at the pulpit. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. I'm grateful that your light continues to shine down upon my life. Thank you for your great miracles that you've shown and wrought in my life. But I thank you even more for the small ones. Please give me the strength to carry on and be a blessing to as many lives as I can. Amen. Amen. Samantha, wow, it's, it's been five years? like somebody's been keeping track. <laughs> Don't just stand there gawking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was so surprised that you to see you here. The only time I see you is on music videos and awards. I'm glad you made your dreams come true. Thank you. But it's not all as it seems from the outside looking in. Would you be surprised if I told you I would be happier if I would have stayed here? Well, I'm not the type to say I told you so. I would not be surprised at all. I've had the opportunity to write and perform and these amazing songs before millions of people in different cities all around the world. But no matter where I've been, I felt the sense of something A few nights ago, I was singing that song I wrote when I was here with you all those years ago, and I got to that line. He helps me face my fears, so they all disappear. And I broke down. Maybe think of you. Wow, well, I'm flattered, but I know you didn't fly all that way just to tell me that. No, of course not. <laughs> when I thought about you, it made me remember how I felt when I was here for that short time. And I remember how you made me feel. I can admit it now that you made me feel so good that it made me afraid. It made me afraid that if I succumbed to what I was feeling that I would be giving up on my dreams and end up like my mother. So sorry that you traded in feeling to chase that dream. Don't your dreams give you that same feeling? It's not the same, even with success. I'm still not as happy as I thought I'd be. That's why I came back. I needed that feeling again. I want that feeling that you gave. Uh, 
I don't think that's possible anymore. Why not? I've had my take of fame and stardom. Now I can be yours. We can do great things together here at A Better Way. I can help you transform this into a mega church. The Jane I Oh, I didn't realize you had company. <laughs> You're Samantha! You look exactly like you do in the music videos! I just love your music! Oh my god! And j -Mo was I thought he was exaggerating when he said he knew you! It's a, this is so much <laughs> Sam, this is my wife, Destiny. This is unbelievable! What are you doing here? Oh my god! Are you gonna sing for us? She gonna sing? That, was, that would be so awesome! <laughs> Actually, she was just passing through and stopped by to say hello. Did you need me for something, anything, honey? Well, I came to get the car keys to pick up my mother for church, and now I just want to kick in and holla <laughs> with Miss <laughs> Samantha. <laughs> Go pick up your mom so you won't be late. <laughs> Plus, we really need to talk to her. I'll see you later. Love. Oh, well, okay, but... I'll be back in a flash. Just wait till I tell my mom you're here. So nice to meet you. Oh. Oh. why it's impossible for us to be together. It's not impossible at all. You just need to be a smart man and you need to make a choice. Um, choose me. Wow. I love my wife and my life. Have you ever heard that poem, A Dream Deferred, by Langston Hughes? Yes, of course. What does that have to do with anything? This is a classic example of love being deferred for something that seems greater. I've learned that there is nothing greater than love, especially the love of someone who knows you and accepts you for all you are, flaws and all. I believe that now. I may have deferred love, but is it really too late? I mean, I just, I want that type of love, and I want it, I need it. I'm sorry. And Gemma. Goodbye, Samantha. And Gemma, come back. Oh my God, this is right back. I started. I'm all alone. It's not fair. Instead of my dreams, my biggest fear is now my 